Hey folks, Jonathan here. Okay, here is the boiler cleaned up. Got some paint on it. It's not beautiful, not perfect, but there you go. Uh, sight glasses. As you can see, this one's kicked out a little farther than that one, but that's what was on it. And it seemed to work, so we put it back. Uh, just cleaned them up a little bit and added a tube in it for the steam to turn into condensation before it goes up in the gauge because you don't want uh, steam to go up in. Uh, it didn't have one on it, but the gauge was up higher. I shortened it up a little bit, but different gauge. Uh, this gauge reads good. It's a little bit off of the, the tab here, but I've tested it and it does read, you know, within a pound or two of accuracy. So we're good there. And let me see. We've got our 80 pound pressure relief valve new old stock ready to go shouldn't have any issues there clean this valve up uh, change the pipe out in here that was uh, galvanized this is all steel also uh, which none of this is the same pipe and <clears throat> most of it's laying right there actually but uh, most of it was galvanized as you can see so let me see of course this is different and I actually changed this small pipe out, not because it was galvanized, because the other one was pretty rough. And put this little valve back on as a drain. So we've got our holes made. I actually made these holes with a knockout, uh, which makes perfectly round holes. Now this hole was already made. There was one in it, one hole in it with a plug, and then these had plugs, but there was no holes. So I just had to make two more holes. So waiting on the tricocks to be here tomorrow. And I bought the extended ones because I didn't want them to get, was too short to be too close. So they're expensive now. Uh, price on everything's went up. Value of the dollars went down. We're doing a little changing on water delivery. Instead of using the injector that was on it, uh, the injector is worth more really than the, well, way more than what I paid for the boiler, to be honest with you. And the thing is, is, uh, this had a three-quarter in injector with half-inch pipes. Well, a three-quarter injector is rated for a 25-horsepower boiler. And this is only one horsepower. So I don't think I want to run that big injector on this boiler. I just no plans to do it. So the plan is to make a pump. We're going to make a hand pump using... I was going to use a hydraulic cylinder, but I found an air cylinder I had. So if it pumps air, it should pump water. Uh, there's no heat involved in this. You know, even if you warm the water up, it's not hot enough to hurt a... The cylinder so we're going to use the cylinder we're going to make a handle a bracket you know mount it uh we're going to actually use uh two check valves and sort of like like these regular check valves so one will let you draw water from the tank the other one will let you pump it in so and i'll show you how to do that and uh we're hoping that this cylinder i've got which is about a one inch travel but if i put a two foot you know handle on it uh, it should pump plenty of pressure and we're going to do the pressure test on it to see how much pressure it will do now, now let me show you something else okay this air compressor this came from a, a good friend of mine uh, he actually saved us and gave it to me it's got a riveted tank galvanized laying down it's concave and convexed uh, so I'm not quite sure if this is supposed to be a lay down or not I think it's supposed to sit upright not as an air compressor tank but as a some kind of a tank so somebody has put this air compressor on it and this is a huge Curtis uh, it's not nearly as old as the tank and the motor is of course way newer than it I think it's one horsepower but I did plug this in and it did work I did pump air with it but we want this tank uh, I'm going to take the compressor off the motor off cut the brackets off and take it off this little cart and uh, I don't know that the, the cart could be original you know this might have been some kind of a I don't know I don't know what it'd be you know to tote, tote something around but could have been a water tank could have been a uh, I don't know could be anything but anyway we'll look at that look at it a little better when we flip it up but it'll probably come off of that eventually but what we're gonna do is mount that engine to a platform we're gonna mount this close to it and this is actually gonna be our water supply tank and we'll do our hand pump from it and actually inject the water in all the way at the bottom which is where you want to do it at uh, also i did a little math on this 
went around it with a string and measured it. It's two and a half inch wide, five inches by five inches, and uh, or five inches wide, two and a half inch that way. So I ran a string around it and measured it, and it come up to 12 and a half inches. Well, if you take a four inch pipe uh, and you multiply it by 3.14, which is pi, you end up with uh, 12.56 inches. So that tells me that a four inch pipe should squeeze and fit down on there. All right, folks, so uh, got everything together. Found me a uh, four inch stack, got a cap on it. Couldn't find any black. I could only get the uh, high galvanized. I guess it's galvanized. It's awful shiny looking, but anyway, uh, the four inch round pipe did fit perfect on that flange. Got our pressure relief valve on. We've got uh, our gauge. It's all on and hooked up. Got the tricocks today. Finally got them in and uh, just screwed in my hand. I've got to take them back out and thread tape them, but uh, I got the long ones, which is good because there's not a lot of room between there because of this cover. But that is done, and now I feel a whole lot better about firing it. The only thing that we don't have is a way to put water in. And like I said, I'm not going to use the injector. I got started with this. Took the air compressor off, took the motor off, and then I found a tag on the bracket and a Montgomery Ward's tag which proved to me that this was never an air compressor uh, that bracket was welded onto that tank uh, and the test pressure on that bracket is 140 on the low side and 195 on the high side so that tank was never rated for that high uh, what it is is that bracket was taken off of some kind of an AC unit and the reason we know that there is a tag on it the tag on it that says dichloro difluoro methane dichloro difluoro methane that's all one word and uh, as you can see so dichloro difluoro methane is R21 freon it held 26 ounces so this was a refrigeration unit bracket and it could have had that I don't think that Curtis compressor was refrigeration I think it was air so I think this thing was just made from a bunch of parts. All right, folks, here's where we're at. I found me an old cart to mount this boiler on. We've got our tank we're working on. We're gonna try to get everything set up. I've made the pump set up here. I'm not completed yet, but uh, we're gonna do a hand pump on this cylinder. Uh, cylinder's kind of big. I'm hoping we'll be able to do it, but what we'll do, we're gonna start off by deadheading right here and seeing if we can get over 80 PSI by hand. And if we can do that, then we're good to go. So it will be no problem. Uh, I hope we will. But what I've got is two check valves. So when you pull it one way, it sucks the water out of there. And when you push it the other way, it won't go back through. And it does this one the opposite. So it pushes it back through here, but won't let it come back off the boiler. So pretty simple setup. Just two check valves. Uh, one, there's a, it's just an air cylinder. Got to put a handle on this and get everything mounted and set up. I'm going to raise the uh, boiler, put an air gap under it so it don't get the board hot. And that's what we're going to do now and then we'll go from there. Alright folks, here you go. We're moving along on it. So, just about got the pump ready to, to test. We're going to do the handle now. I've still got to take this off. We've got to put a plug in the bottom of the tank because there's a there's actually a hole directly in the center but it's, it's uh, concaved. Not convex, concave. Yeah, concave. So we are going to uh, put a plug in it. We're just going to draw from there, which is about three inches off the bottom, which is fine. Of course, I say that, but I mean the bottom's higher than what what it's showing here, so it's probably closer to two inches. But you know, I'd rather not get off the bottom anyway. So I wanted to put some kind of a level gauge there, but. I didn't have one or couldn't find one, so I've got a uh, got a temperature gauge, which absolutely means nothing. But I liked it. A buddy of mine gave that to me at a show, actually this year, and uh, I just liked it. So that's what we got. It's 90 degrees out here too. We're over 90 degrees. So anyway, now I got to get this plug out. Now this is just going to have a plug to be able to take out and fill. Uh, probably need to vent it so we don't create a vacuum in that tank. If you create a vacuum in the tank, it may make it harder to pump. We don't want to do that. So, uh, plug the bottom. 
Uh, I've got to take everything back apart and thread tape everything. Uh, as you can see, my when you use these check valves, you have to have this nut toward the top. And as you can see, I don't have that one up yet, so I got to. When I tighten everything down, I'll have to turn it and get it all right. And we're going to do a little machining on this handle. This is a Model T. Uh, I think it's high and low handle. And we're going to do a little changing on it and moving around. And uh, that's what we're going to use for a, for a handle to, to pump it. The guy I bought this rack from or this uh, cart from uh, owned a Sears, uh, I guess it was a retail store. And he used this at the retail store for a lot of years and it was old when he got it so you know it's pretty neat so anyway that's the deal we've got to uh, get the engine out here and get it mounted and the main thing we'll do now is get this together so we can check our pressure and make sure that we can at least get 80 psi out of this hand pump okay folks we've moved a long ways here got my handle hooked up my cylinder I've got it slotted here so it can raise up and down so what's going to happen is once we get all this tight uh, and I go forward and back it's going to the pins going to go up and down hopefully and the cylinder will stay level and won't try to loosen up or anything but I think it's going to be fine so we don't have much place there's not much uh, arc you know when it comes to raising up and down so uh, alright everything is how we want it we're going to take and add this gauge in at the end of here once we get water in it and then uh, we're going to see if we can at least get 80 psi or more all right folks i'm not going to say it does it the easiest in the world but there you go there's 80 over 80 120. so we know it's sufficient to pump enough to put 80 in you know if we if we're actually at 80 and we need water Okay, folks, seems to be working pretty good. Uh, I actually pumped it up about 15 pounds while I was putting the water in. Uh, of course, it would have pumped a lot faster if I had it full of water because it was compressing the air, but uh, I've got about halfway full, and I'm going to pump this thing. You'll hear me pump it. So it actually moves up about, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch every pump. You see it going right on up. So, water level's fine where it's at. Uh, working really good. It's nice and solid now because the pipes are all hooked up. And uh, I've got this plug in there, but I've got it barely in, so I can hear it sucking air. And uh, everything else is doing good. I think everything's going to be all right. So, next is... Uh, well, we got a few things to wrap up, but uh, I want to get the engine mounted on here and get it plumbed in, and then uh, we will fire it. All right, folks, getting ready to build the fire in this thing. I got it plumbed up. We've got a uh, oiler on it to get some steam oil into it. Plumbed it up to the top, and hopefully it will run. I've timed it, and I don't have a reverse lever on it, but we can change it right here. So it should be okay. We're going to see if it runs. I don't know. Uh, shot in the dark here. This engine was very, very, very rough. And the uh, steam chest was missing, of course. Most of you all probably remember that. And I had to cast all that and then build it up, build pieces to it because it was broke off. And uh, just pretty rough. I, you know, it was one of the engines that was probably farther going than what most people wanted to fix. Still hadn't painted my flywheel or nothing yet, but we're just going to give it a try and see what happens. All right. Okay, folks, I've got some pine cones and pine straw in it. And then I've got some wood here in the wheelbarrow that I'm going to put in it. It is now 4.05. So we're going to light it and see how long it takes to get steam up. All right. All right. It's not, not burning good and hot yet. Of course, from all the smoke, it's 411 now. So we're still heating things up here. And uh, once it starts burning good and hot, I think it'll do all right. So I guess that's just part there you got to live with. 
Don't no, don't have no coal for it. If I had some coal, I think it'd probably do a little better. Anyway, with water in it. I'll let her heat up. Alright. Alright folks. 428. So it's been 20 something minutes. 24 minutes or something. We're up 15 psi. So we're building that we're actually building steam pressure now. Uh took a little bit to get it going. Uh there's no grate in the bottom of that, and I need to build a two-piece grate to put it that'll just fit in the door to sit on each side to keep it off the bottom. And uh I have no doubt it'll burn a lot better because that seems to be the biggest problem is getting air to go in the front here, getting it opened up. So we'll build a grate for it later. Probably had one originally, but I can't see where there was one, but bound to have been one. I think we can get by with a two-piece because the door's about the size of half. So anyway, that's the plan. But 15 and climbing. I uh, don't know if it's going to run or not. We'll see. Know something here shortly. All right. Okay, so she's done really good so far. Uh, I put me a little pan there because I don't want no ashes falling on my on my yeah my cart. So runs forward and reverse both ways, no problem. Uh, don't think my valve is seating really good inside there. So when you turn the steam on, it's bypassing quite a bit. So I think I need to do a little work on that, but that's not a big problem. And it may break in as it wears wears in also. Uh, let me see. We're at 30 PSI right now. I don't like the expansion. So you see where the water level's at, almost to the top. The problem is, is okay, I got this valve shut off, so I know there's nothing coming out of this tank into it, which I didn't figure that anyway, but you know. But someone would say that either way, so. This valve is completely turned off. Check valve is working good. Uh, as it heats up, it expands big time. And when you go to run it, you can run the water down pretty quick. So that's not an issue because this pump seems to be working really good. We can put water in. It's just the fact that uh, it expands so fast. You can see where we're at. We're way up there already. I was wanting to go ahead and go up to the 80 PSI and do a pop-off test. And... We're climbing right now uh, pretty quick, so we're at 35, or almost 35. But I'm gonna have to let some water out or something here, because it's gonna be over overflowing with water. All right, so we're waiting on it to hit the 80 PSI and see if the pop-off works. It probably won't lose much, because this thing's gonna lose pressure really fast. So our water's hanging up there good. We're at 75. We should we should go at 80. That should be the what it's supposed to be. So probably gonna start getting close. I don't think it's gonna be impressive like the big Kiwani boiler. Out there. It should be popping off about now. Take it on up to 90. Mm -hmm. There we go. Goes off a little above 80. Not very impressive yet, anyway. Let's 
was holding it a little under 90, but that might be all it's going to open. Not very really exciting, is it? Yeah, I'm going to want to test it up for 90 and not 80. Looks about 88 PSI is where it's going at. The boiler probably won't build the same quick enough to to make it go any more than that because it's going to maintain that. I guess that's all it's going to do is just maintain that. Uh, let's turn the engine on and see if it brings it back down. Yeah, it's already running back down. I've got oil coming in and it's popping oil back on my box, so I might have put something between there. Need to run the exhaust because I got a lot of water on here that's dirty. Makes it look bad. I'm going to clean the engine back up. Steam oilers on. That's good, good running engine. It seems to be working real well. Now we need the boat. Wow, what a successful run. <laughs> Something went pretty right. Engine's still running good. It's actually running better than it was. The uh, longer I run it, the better it gets. So. We're back down to 15. I haven't put a no wood whatsoever in it, and you can see that's what I've used, which was uh, probably about half, maybe a little less than half of a wheelbarrow. So uh, I hadn't used a lot of water either. You can see we got it up there, and I can still see it in the. I don't know if you can or not, but I can still see it in there. So pretty impressive, really.
because uh, it is, let me see, I don't know what time we started, but it's 542 now, 405, so hour and a half, yeah. pretty neat, pump's working really well, probably need to go to a smaller, maybe a one inch pump, you don't need to pump as much water in as quick as we are, probably need to, we can slow that down and then we could uh, have more pressure, but that's like I said, just what I had laying around, so. Uh, otherwise everything's good to go engines are running great i think our crankshaft's been a little bit on this thing and it wobbles a little bit but that's okay uh, it's a pretty crew built engine early early engine and i think everything will be fine all right appreciate everybody watching and until next time bye